The Evergreen State, better known as Washington State, is a hiker's paradise, with the Cascade Mountain Range offering a plethora of trails for day and through hikers. Mount Rainier is arguably the most trekked mountain in the Pacific Northwest, located 60 miles outside of Seattle, standing at 14,411 feet, with blooms of wildflower meadows, breathtaking scenery, and rippling streams. Rainier is a sight to behold. As of 2017, 245 recorded fatalities have occurred in the Mount Rainier National Park. This number is not particularly high considering the dangers of summoning the mountain, along with other mishaps that occur at any and every national park. I could not, however, find an exact number of people who have gone missing from here. Many believe the exact number is concealed because it could detour people from visiting, thus affecting the national park's revenue. Could Mount Rainier potentially be a hotspot for strange and unexplained disappearances? The missing 411 phenomenon was coined by a retired police detective named David Politis. Politis became curious about disappearances in our national parks after a forest ranger brought it to his attention. The ranger told Politis he questioned the nature of certain disappearances within the parks. Intrigued, Politis began researching these cases. It came to his attention some of them defied logic and reason and he began to notice a pattern between the disappearances. Oftentimes, an adult or a child would go missing when they were in the company of friends and family, as if they were there one minute and gone the next, leaving their loved ones shocked to not find them in a matter of minutes. If the person is found dead or alive, most times they were found miles away from where they went missing, usually at a considerably higher elevation. With some of these disappearances, the person's belongings and or body are found at a location that had already been covered by search and rescue, and many times clothing is found removed. When cadaver dogs are administered to locate a missing person, the scent seems to stop abruptly, almost as if they had vanished into thin air. People disappear in the wilds all the time, and we're talking about something different. These were unusual things that don't make sense that happen to cluster together cluster together in three to four, sometimes as many as 20, 30 people missing at one location. The individual cases are strange enough, Politis says, but stranger still were the reactions of federal agencies when he asked for public records. And when we FOIA'd them, we got a response back that they don't keep any lists of missing people. The response was not only no, but hell no, he says. So he began putting his own list together and discovered what appears to be nearly 30 clusters of disappearances in national parks and forests, cases which meet a narrow set of odd characteristics. The pe Approximately 1,600 people have gone missing from our national parks in the U.S. alone. Through Politis's research, he has discovered 28 clusters in North America where unexplained disappearances are more likely to occur. Mount Rainier is one of them. Eric Lewis was 57 years old when he quite literally vanished while trying to summit Rainier. Eric was an adept climber who had summited many mountains around the world. He had successfully summited Rainier at least five times before his disappearance, so he was no stranger to the terrain. On July 1st, 2010, Eric and his two friends were ascending the last portion of the climb. They took the standard route, which is relatively straightforward, although strenuous. Eric's friends, Don and Trevor, were ahead of him, making Eric the last one tethered to the rope. The day started out nice enough, but weather conditions took a turn rapidly, and the men were hit with high winds, making visibility difficult, but they decided to push forward. At 13,900 feet, it was routine for those in front to stop and help pull the ones behind up the line. Don and Trevor began to do so, and they were shocked to find the line had gone slack and Eric was no longer on it, as if he had intentionally unhooked himself from the rope. They had seen him only moments before. Where had he gone? They went down to the location where Eric had last been seen. With no Eric in sight, they decided to ascend just in case he had continued up the mountain and they had somehow missed him. They were perplexed that he was nowhere to be found. After some time looking for their companion, the men headed back down quickly and told rangers right away about Eric's strange disappearance. Immediately, a small group set out to look for him, but there was no sign of Eric anywhere. Eric had only packed for a day climb and was not prepared to stay overnight. He didn't have a tent, a sleeping bag, or any extra food. On July 2nd, an extensive search of the area was conducted. At 13,600 feet, only Eric's backpack was found. His water bottle, climbing harness, and snow shovel were found within. About 200 feet away from his pack was a man-made snow cave. It is a possibility Eric dug the small cave for shelter, but why wasn't he in it? And why was his pack left there? 
What was even more baffling, search and rescue could not find any footprints in the snow in or around the cave. They continued to comb the area for any other trace of Eric to no avail. Eric was the more experienced climber out of his friends, but he knew what safety precautions to take when climbing. Why did Eric Lewis unhook from that line? Almost 11 years later, and no other trace of Eric has ever been found on Rainier. Karen Sykes was 70 years old when she went missing while hiking Rainier. Karen was an avid hiker and photographer who had a deep love for the outdoors. Before her disappearance, she wrote a book about the best wildflower hikes in Washington State. She also had a blog discussing less-known hiking trails here in the Pacific Northwest. Karen was known as a trail guru by those who knew her. She was in great shape despite her age and always took trail safety seriously. In June of 2014, Karen and her boyfriend Bob set out to hike the Owie High Lake Trail. Karen was planning to write an article about the trail and was excited to do what she loved most, explore. Around noon, the two decided to split up. Bob wanted to eat some lunch, and Karen decided she wanted to press onward. They planned to meet back up within the hour, however. When Bob continued on the trail, he was surprised that he hadn't ran into Karen. Confused, he spent some time looking for her, but with no luck, he reported her missing that night. Many people thought Karen was still alive, just lost. Due to the fact she was always prepared for a hike and well-versed in nature, search and rescue was administered, and Karen's body was found three days after she went missing. Karen was found over two miles from the trail. This area was not in the initial search parameters. The area where her body was located is incredibly rough, steep terrain that is difficult to access. No one knows exactly how Karen got to this particular area. Karen's autopsy revealed her cause of death to be hypothermia and heart disease. Her family found this information shocking. Karen had a very active lifestyle and showed no signs of having health issues. They were confused as to how she got lost and wandered off the trail. She knew this hike well, and even if she hadn't, she knew what safety precautions to take. It is theorized she may have hiked to a steep lookout point to capture a photo, but slipped. There was no evidence to support this when her body was examined. Another possibility is Karen wandered off the trail and became disoriented, eventually succumbing to the elements. But how did she travel through such hostile terrain? Karen's last blog entry read, Though I am not young, I still enjoy the challenge of rugged trails, obscure trails, abandoned trails, and looking for artifacts, even if the price is a losing battle with devil's club, salmonberry, rotting stumps, and nettles. Sometimes it just feels good to tussle with Mother Nature. It builds character. Although these cases are interesting and spark curiosity, Karen and Eric's families are still without them. Eric's loved ones still don't have any answers as to what happened to him that day on Rainier, and I really feel for them in that regard. It is important to note that David Politis' work has been heavily scrutinized, and many believe these disappearances have simpler explanations than what is theorized by him. At the end of the day, you are free to make your own judgment. But thank you for watching, you guys. I know this was a different style of video for my channel. I usually am on camera, but I wanted to get creative and just try something a little different. If you are new to this channel, I share information about missing people, usually from the Pacific Northwest, because my sister, Jessie Grace Moore, went missing from Washington State when she was only 23 years old. If you are interested in hearing more about Jessie's story, I will leave all those videos linked down below in the description box. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I hope you all are having an amazing day, and I will see you on the next one. Bye! Bye.